Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition, and what we're now going to talk about is how to choose the truncation value of the number of modes to keep for the SVD. So we're going to talk about the SVD and truncation. And this is one of the most important issues that anyone using the SVD will have to face, is that when you have uh, x equals u sigma v transpose. Remember, we can choose to keep only the first r columns of u, r columns of v, and r by r submatrix of v, which we're going to denote either by u tilde sigma tilde v tilde transpose. Sometimes I denote this with a little subscript r to denote that it's rank r. You either use tildes or r's. Um, but how do you choose? So how? to choose R. This is one of the most fundamental questions in the SVD, and there are all kinds of heuristics and rules of thumb to do this, so uh, I'm just going to show you a number of them. Oftentimes what you'll do is you'll plot the log of the singular values on the diagonal of sigma, so you'll plot the log of sigma j versus j, and you hope that your distribution looks you know, something like that, where there's some really, really energetic singular values, and then some that are really small. And so what people often do is they'll pick this rank R by identifying something like an elbow, where it goes from being high energy to low energy, high variance to low variance. Sometimes, so this is an elbow or a knee, Sometimes you'll pick R so that you capture 90 or 95 or 99% of the energy in this. So you'll basically pick R so that everything above this R is 99% of the distribution and everything below is only 1%. So sometimes you'll do it based on the percentage of variance or energy explained. I would argue that these are very heuristic and they don't work that well unless you have a really, really uh, clean, sharp drop off in your singular values. Okay? Uh, and so there is a fantastic paper by Gavish and Donahoe that I want to point you towards, which essentially comes up with an optimal way to truncate, an optimal rank R to truncate, given some assumptions on the type of data you have. Okay, so this is a paper by. Uh, Gavish and Donahoe. It's one of my favorite papers in the last few years. I think this is a 2014 uh, IEEE transactions on information uh, info theory. Uh, I believe it's volume 60, uh, issue 8. Okay, so you can find this, this paper. It's an excellent, excellent paper, and it gives conditions on how to choose the optimal rank to truncate your SVD. And remember, you know, we want to truncate this SVD because we want to have as few modes given by the columns of U and V as possible to describe the, the data in X. And so if I can get away with, you know, finding five informative columns of U and V as opposed to 500, that would be great. So I want our, so there's always this balance in modeling between complexity and kind of accuracy, okay? If I have more rank R, I'll have a more accurate but more complex model. If I have lower rank R, I'll have a less accurate but less complex model. And so we're looking for this sweet spot where we get the most of the information in X, but without uh, kind of overfitting to maybe the noise in X or some of the little features we don't care about. Okay, and that's kind of what what they are getting at here. And I'm not going to walk you through all of the math of their derivation. Uh, their paper is fantastic. It's easy to read, and they have code online, so you can you can work it out yourself. Uh, it's in section 1.7 of our book, also. So this is uh, section. 1.7 of our book, Data-Driven Science and Engineering. Uh, the link will be in the comments. What I really want to do now is I want to just give you a feeling for how this Gavish Donahoe optimal hard thresholding works. Okay, And their entire premise is that your data x can be written as the sum of kind of a true low rank data signal. I'm going to call that x true plus x noise. 
And more importantly, let, let's, let's put a little gamma out here, okay? So X noise is going to be assumed to be a zero mean, variance one, normally distributed. Okay, so it's Gaussian noise, zero mean, unit variance, multiplied by this gamma. So you can be large or small depending on the magnitude of this gamma. Okay, and so the observation is that for lots and lots of high dimensional data, uh, I'm going to draw some pictures here. If we, we actually can compute analytically what the SVD of a noise matrix would look like. The SVD of a noise matrix looks kind of like that. Uh, this is the log sigma versus J. And what uh, Gavish and Donahoe realized was that lots and lots of data, if you take its SVD, actually looks a lot like this. It looks like this, and then at some point it deviates in the large singular values. Okay, And so what they, uh, what they essentially are, are doing is saying anything that is larger than the noise floor from the, the SVD of the noise matrix, everything above here is signal. And everything below here is noise and should be truncated. And that's precisely how they find this uh, optimal rank R to truncate the SVD. And they go on to actually prove that if your data really does have low rank structure and a Gaussian noise matrix added to it, then what you want to do is you want to find the first singular value that's larger than the biggest S singular value of your noise matrix. And you want to keep all of those singular values and truncate everything that is smaller than, uh, than the noise floor. Okay, so it's a very, very intuitive, common sense thing to do is that you define a noise floor given by the max uh, sigma of your noise matrix, and you only keep the terms in your, in your SVD of your, your corrupted noisy measurement matrix X that are above that noise floor. So that determines the rank R. It's only the singular values that are larger than some hard threshold value above this noise floor. Okay, pretty cool. Um, and what they do is they actually show some uh, different cases where you can use this. So let's say, for example, I have um, case one is pretty simple. Let's say x is square and gamma is known. This is the least likely case in reality, right? You don't usually have a square matrix x and you don't usually know how much noise you have. But let's say for, for now you, you have a square x and you know gamma. What we're going to do is we're going to truncate all sigma lower than some threshold value tau, and this tau is going to be determined by these, uh, by these values here. Okay, So if x is square and gamma is known, then tau is equal to 4 over the square root of 3 times gamma times root n. Okay, this is a very nice compact, this is not an easy formula to derive, but it's a beautiful compact formula in terms of n, the dimension of your matrix x, if it's a square n by n matrix, gamma, the amount of noise, if you, if you actually know how much noise there is, and this uh, factor 4 over root 3. Any singular value that's larger than that, you keep. Any that's smaller than that, you truncate, and it looks like this. Okay. But what's, I think, really, really useful about this is that they go on to solve the case where x is rectangular and we don't know gamma. We just have a noisy matrix, but we don't know how much noise, so gamma unknown. And in this case, they have a really clever approach where essentially what they do is they all they have is measurements of a singular value distribution that maybe looks like that. And so what they do is they take the median singular value, sigma median, and from that median singular value and the aspect ratio, the shape of this rectangular matrix, we're going to call that beta, uh, is kind of n divided by m or m divided by n, depending on what size the matrix is. So based on this median singular value and this aspect ratio of this rectangular matrix, they can infer 
kind of the best fit noise distribution that's consistent, assuming that this median singular value is in the noise floor, which is a good assumption if I have enough data. Then they can again infer what the max singular value of this red noise distribution is and determine what this tau to threshold is to give us this optimal rank R. Okay, and the formula is a little bit involved. I'm not going to reproduce the whole thing, but here we have tau equals some uh, omega of beta times the median singular value, where this is essentially a correction factor uh, for the aspect ratio of the matrix. And this is a pretty involved expression. It's um, a little bit uh, nasty to write down. It's in their paper and they have a nice MATLAB code to actually compute this. But what, what you need to know is that if you have data that has structure and noise, even if you don't know how much noise is added, you can estimate it from that median singular value and then you can infer what this optimal tau is where you would threshold singular values below that tau to give you your optimal rank R. Uh, okay, so I'm going to code this up in a couple of examples. We're going to do uh, one matrix where it's exactly this. It's a low rank structure plus a white noise matrix. And we're going to show that this works really, really well. And then I'm also going to show you this on the eigenfaces data set, where it's not at all obvious that it can be written like this. I mean, it's not like there's Gaussian noise on top of a low rank face structure. But even in real world data, this still gives a very, very good approximation for where to truncate to get meaningful features. So I'm gonna show you that in two examples in the next lectures. Thank you.